A new financial crisis has developed recently in America, and the trail of destruction it could leave behind will look nothing like what you might expect. In fact, I believe nearly 40% of the elite publicly traded companies, brands you've known and used your whole life, could go bankrupt because of a strange market event I call a flipping, wiping out thousands of investors' fortunes. I just finished writing a brand new report explaining exactly what the flipping is and how billionaires are already profiting from this big event and what you should be doing to prepare as well. To get a copy of my new free report with all the details, simply go to mccallfreereport.com. Again, that's mccallfreereport.com for a free copy of my new report. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It is Thursday, July 28th, the beautiful day down here in South Florida. We got a big show for you. We got a great interview coming up. Enrique Abeda. If you don't know the name, you will know it after this. Uh, one of the guys that, that really kind of jives with me, he thinks outside the box, but we're going to talk about anything and everything about the future. We're going to talk about the, the Fed rate hike this week. We're going to talk about sports, investing in sports, something I haven't talked about too much. The metaverse, the internet, electric vehicles, all kinds of ideas. And of course, his island question. I asked Enrique what stock, what sector he will own for 10 years if he's on an island. You want to hear the answer to that. All this and more coming up right now on Making Money. It's my pleasure to welcome Enrique Abeda, uh, one of our colleagues, my colleague here at the MarketWise family. Um, it's nice to bring somebody on that actually has a similar view to me, but let me give you a little bit of background about Enrique. He's the editor of several newsletters, The Empire Elite Trader, Empire Elite Growth, Empire SPAC Investor, and Empire Elite Options. He's had 20 plus years on Wall Street. Uh, he founded and served as managing partner of two long, short hedge funds. Back in 2000, he co-founded Stadia Capital, uh, working as a portfolio manager. And most recently, he uh, served as co-founder and CEO of digital media and e-commerce company, Project M Group. That was founded back in 2017, and the company acquires digital media properties, including Revolver Magazine. If you're not familiar with that, it's the biggest hard rock and metal magazine in North America with more than 1 million subscribers. And Enrique, I think you're probably the only guy at Stansbury and the MarketWise family that has more tattoos i have a few but more than me like I, I always like i remember first time i saw you on stage i'm like oh this guy's awesome he looks so cool and it makes sense with the heavy metal magazine and everything else going on the one thing i will say enrique i noticed your t-shirt a second ago it's the new york yankees as a phillies fan it's tough to, to see that but i, I and, and i couldn't i didn't know who to root for in, a, in the recent subway series because i don't like the mets or the yankees and the mets obviously swept the yankees so sorry about that but thanks for coming on the show uh, thanks. Yeah. No, actually, so what I was going to say is in addition to Revolver, we own Inked Magazine, uh, which is the oh. largest tattoo media company in the world with over 50 million on social. So that's actually the, the tattoos wow. probably have more to do with that than the rock and metal. But anyway, the rock, these okay. are actually the logos. <laughs> that's the Inked logo and that's the Revolver logo. So, Oh, wow. So those those are newer ones, I guess, right? Within the last few years, I assume? These tattoos? Yeah. I mean, like I yeah. bought Inked maybe two, three years ago and uh, Revolver five okay. years ago. So newish. Okay. Newish. Okay. All right. So let's jump into these markets. You know, we've uh, had the Fed this week, obviously come out 75 basis points rate hike it was kind of baked in. Uh, you know, we kind of knew it was happening. Market had a big rally that afternoon after that, selling off a little bit the next day. Uh, what is your view right now, just on the market in general, with the Fed? Um, you know where they think uh, you know recession we're in, I guess technically. But uh, you know where do you where do you see things going here, the rest of the year into next year? Well, you know, I, I'm going to ch change your question completely <laughs> to a certain extent, which is I have a view on what I think is going to happen with the economy, but that view is sort of a probabilistic one. You know, a sixty forty. But I have views on what is working right now in terms of trading strategies and what will work in terms of investing strategies where I have 100 percent certainty. So, you know, the way I would tackle that is say, look, I think that I have been a uh, proponent of transitory for longer would be the uh, would be the, the, the idea. 
that I fundamentally don't think it was monetary liquidity that drove the majority of the inflation in the economy. I think it's really the, the disruptions that we saw. And accordingly, I think that inflation will, you know, retrace to three, four, five percent. I also think that, you know, and I wrote this to Bill Ackman the other day. I said, well, why, why doesn't the Fed just say 3% is the new target or 4%? Those, are, those aren't terrible. Like, you know, I mean, historically, those aren't terrible. So, you know, look, I think there's a lot of cash out there. I think that we've deflated a lot of the bubbles that were out there. I think economic growth is positive. And, and, and it comes back to probably one thing, job growth. You know, I, I really struggle to see, you know, so, so look, um, we, you, you can have a bear correction or a bear market. A bear correction goes down 10 to 20 and lasts 6 to 12 months. A bear market goes down 20 to 40 and lasts 18 months to two years. The difference between the two is a true recession, like not a, not a little hiccup recession like we've seen. Um, that comes down to employment. And so the question becomes, do I think that we go to negative employment? And man, I struggle to get there from here. But, but, but let me take a step back. I will tell you this, you know, for trading strategies, um, you know, you, you, William O'Neill talks about the market trend being, uh, you know, the primary factor in three or four stocks. We clearly are in a downtrend until otherwise. And so, you know, what I use for to look at that is I look at 100 days of trading. And once the S&P and I'm pulling the chart up here, once the S&P gets to a point where it's actually up for a trailing 100 day period, meaning I look at today and 100 days ago, then I'll say we're in a flat trend. But until that point, we're in a downtrend and you need to trade accordingly. On the other side, we're seeing investment opportunities that I think are some of the best things I've seen in 20 years. It's like the dot-com bubble, except you're seeing companies that are so much more sophisticated with such better free cash flow, which with such um, better balance sheets that I have a bunch of stocks that I'm like, if we go into a true recession, they'll get cut by 50%, but there's no way they're going bankrupt. And of these stocks, the majority of them are going to be two to 10 baggers. So, you know, the nice thing about math is if you have five stocks and four of them go to zero, but one of them is a 10 bagger, you just made like a 30 or 40% IRR across two or three years. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm constructive on the economy. It's a big, what if, you know, I'm 60, 40, uh, for trading strategies, we're in a downtrend and you need to respect that trend. Um, but for investment strategies, I think, um, I literally reached out to my sister-in-law and I've never given her any financial advice. And I said, if you want to talk about your IRA, like, let's talk now, because I haven't felt this way in, in, in 10 years. I mean, actually, 2008, 2009 was the last time I felt uh, about individual stocks, seeing these kinds of opportunities. I, I, I love to hear that because I, I, I'm on the same page. I was talking last night. I was at a happy hour with uh, some some business colleagues and talking about the market, the real estate guys. We were talking about the market. And. They said, you know, do you think the market's bottom? I said, I don't know about the market, but I, I feel there's a lot of great companies that have bottomed in the last couple of months. And I feel that there's opportunities right now that even if we do, something does happen. We have another, you know, uh, leg down. I'm OK putting some money into them now because I feel three, five, ten years, which is my time horizon. They will, should be much higher. Like you said, I believe in the companies. And you brought up uh, uh, employment and you know, this week, uh, Fed Chairman Powell talked about he, get, kept, he kept getting the question about recession and he kept saying, hey, listen, I don't think this is a recession because of employment. You still have what, 11 and a half million job openings. Um, and, you know, I get mixed from different people, the different walks of life tell me, well, the economy is terrible. So let me ask you a question. I, I believe we're in a bit of a um, we're kind of causing this this recession, this negativity. It's it's a you know self fulfilling prophecy. The more we talk negative, the more we talk negative. Even though things may not be that bad, we feel like shit's negative. Do you do you get that feeling where when you ask people about life, well, they just feel negative right I'm now? I'm going to tell you a couple things. You know, first off, it's a biological imperative that the human brain weights negative uh, stimulus eight times versus positive stimulus. You know, when you when you think about it, in cavemen were you know times getting food in your stomach you know, makes you, uh, gives you, is, leaves you fed for a day, getting eaten by a saber tooth leaves you dead permanently. So, you know, what happens is we overweight negative, uh, negative, uh, uh, information. The other thing, and, you know, I've seen this, I started my career in 1993. Um, we didn't, we barely had email. We didn't have PDFs. We didn't have any of the information. I mean, I'm, I could get on my Bloomberg right now and talk to guys who literally run one trillion, one trillion dollars. 
you know, the, the, the way that information moves. And so it's been fascinating to actually see the sentiment indicators like bear bull, you know, all these things. They have ticked along at some of the lowest rankings ever. But I'm going to tell you, I think that we we biologically overweight negative uh, stimulus. I think that technology is exacerbating that, but it doesn't change. It can influence economic reality. I mean, obviously, Heisinger's uncertainty principle, but you know, plays a role or reflexivity, you know, sources concept. But I don't think it, it can have an, enough of an effect at, in the actual real economy to to change it. So, you know, I kind of ignore what people say about the economy and look at the numbers. I don't know. <laughs> and I ignore I and I ignore the economy and, and look at the market. Like, you know, that's what I'm saying is like I, I just uh, I, oh, the market tells a story. Yeah, it's I, I, I have a much more confident my stock market views right now, uh, short and long term yeah. than I am. What's going to happen with the economy? I almost think the economy doesn't matter. I mean, only one thing's matter. You know, what, what, the exogenous shock of Russia clearly played a role. I think absent another exogenous shock, which I can't predict an exogenous shock. How if I know? You know, maybe he invades Poland or whatever. I mean, I don't think he's getting his ass kicked, yeah. so I doubt it. Um, but absent another exogenous shock, I think that we're we're probably okay. You know, I bought stocks for the first time yeah. in May, and I'm actually up. I bought Tark, you know, Triple Arc. I bought Arc. I yeah. bought three, <laughs> three Triple Qs. And uh, as of yesterday, I was up like 10, 15%. Today, I'm probably, you know, up five. <laughs> they move a lot. So, so. So when you you go in, you go in hard. I mean, that's like you can't triple or, or double the arc. I mean, you can't get a little more aggressive than that. So speaking of arc, I, I know you have some view on you know the future of the automotive industry. I call it transportation 2.0, electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles. What's your view on that right now? Because a lot of those stocks have gotten beat up. We had Ford earnings this week, and they're pretty good actually. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Tesla. I've always been. You know, I know some of our colleagues. I think it's kind of funny. I think one one of your very your your right hand man. I think called Tesla to go to zero several times on stage, and it's obviously not going to although, zero. Although he, uh, he what is he, he did change his sector? mind on that four years ago. So I get, you got to give him credit. He reversed. Uh, he reversed uh, his thoughts. Well, I, I I saw him several times. Yeah. yeah no. He he. he but, and he vocally anyway, did. So, he vocally did. He's. I, I won't say he's okay. been. A, I won't say he's been a fan of the stock, but he certainly. He, he yeah. went out of his way to say, look, I'm, I'm changing my view. Look, you know, we love the we love the idea. Um, you know, Tesla, I struggle with a little bit because, you know, Tesla is going to lose market share every day for the next 30 years. You know, they are at max market share. Now, the other thing is that Tesla has certainly priced in a tremendous amount of value for the uh for the for the for the the EV opportunity, um, but you get back to Ford. I put on the other end, and so I, I don't have a view on Tesla, kind of one way or the other. I, I think that they they've got max market share. That number is going to go down for eternity, and I've got eight hundred and fifty eight billion of value attributed to um, attributed to uh, what you call it to to uh, electric vehicles. Um, Ford has a fifty four million dollar market cap. Ford is going to be two, doing two million electric vehicles. Um, Ford, I think, will move to spin off this. Um, the 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 electric vehicle uh arm um so tesla is a push to me electric vehicles i like i think the battery issue um is a real issue but i think there's a couple things that you could do like ford that are just an incredible like you know the stock's just cheap on i mean ford on on depressed earnings because of semiconductors ford is trading and now these are these are more ford is trading at six times you know like i think ford i think ford could be a 10 bagger from here, you know, because they're going to execute and they've actually executed a lot better than General Motors. So I like the, I like the space. I like the theme. I think that there's actually some interesting older school opportunities that are emerging. I like Tesla, uh, like conceptually, but I, I struggle with the stock. I don't know that I'd buy any pure EV stock. I'd go more for the, you know, bullets, uh, picks and shovels and or one of these legacy guys that's that's also going to be attacking the space. So they, this week, you know, they came out Mansion mentioned today's going to back the new energy bill. I think it's three hundred eighty four billion, something like that. So all the solar stocks, all the battery stocks are, are rocking and rolling. Um, so you talk about picks and shovels and I, and I love that investment strategy. So when it comes to EVs, would you look at, let's say, the battery makers? Would you look at the um, potential miners that, that make the materials out for the batteries? Is there any angle that you really like yeah, look, in that, I mean, that broad space? We don't, we don't want to give away, you know, too many picks. Um, but, uh, sure, you know, sure. like, I think there's a lot of stuff in the lithium space, uh, including some off the run stuff in the international area. 
that's very interesting. Um, I think there's some of the legacy auto parts manufacturers that uh, focus on electrical, um, you know, because while people say that there you go from 2000 parts or whatever to 40 parts in a, in an EV, it's an electric vehicle. So there's still a lot of electric parts. Um, so I think there's yeah. some, some and, and these stocks, you know, I'm pulling up the one I'm thinking of right now, which again, I'm not going to give away. Um, you know, sure. everything's come down on the back of the semiconductor shortages. So, you know, our favorite auto supplier pick, I mean, yeah, here's, here it is. Our favorite auto supplier pick, which is the number one electrical, uh, systems manufacturer, you know, has come down from 180 to a hundred, uh, in the last, uh, in the last six months. And, uh, so I think there's, there's areas there. Um, yeah, that would be kind of the, the, the areas I would look at, um, you know, lithium, uh, diversified lithium plays and, uh, auto parts. And then I don't know, but again, I go back to it. I wouldn't even screw with that stock. I, I buy Ford. Yeah. 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 Don't make it any more, you know, difficult than it is, right. Just go with the old legacy Ford. Well, and, no, the, the, the difference is the, the difference is, is that I, I, like I said, I think Ford is a, Ford could be a, a, a 10 bagger. Like, you know, and, and that's what, cause I, I, that's a big thing with my philosophy. You know, I have trading strategies and I have investing strategies in investing strategies. If I don't really think I can make 10 times my money, I don't even want to bother because you get one, you get one 10 times stock, right? It makes up for a hell of a lot of mistakes. And so, you know, I mean, you know how many stocks in, in every decade go up at least 10 times, hundreds, hundreds, and, you know, I, I'll t even taking out biotech hundreds. So focus on those, you know, and, uh, but yeah, yep. so I like Ford. So speaking of things that don't go up, um, I, I, I've been on Daniela, one of our colleagues podcasts many times. And, and I'm like the only guy that goes on there that hates gold. I think it's one of the worst investments out there. And I, I saw a tweet, I think from you talking about, you know, gold prices, not being a big fan of gold to either. Um, what, what is your view? And, and, you know, obviously there's the gold bugs that will, love gold it could go down 80 percent, and i still think it's the greatest investment but what's your view on gold right now especially the fact that we are going through all the craziness in the world and it's been shit. it's done nothing i mean, uh, I mean so what's your view gold, on gold gold's the dumbest thing ever like i mean i, I can't yeah. even i mean you know the fact is that the metal is mostly useless there are some industrial uses but if you took all the gold that's out of the ground i think actually if you take the gold that's coming out of the ground you have would use less than 5% for industrial uses. That means that all the gold that is out of the ground, we have hundreds and hundreds of times. So gold is crypto as far as I'm concerned, right? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the difference is, is the beholder in this case is an average age of 55 and going to die in the next 20 years. And I think it gets replaced by Bitcoin. So, and, and I don't, again, I'm a numbers, I'm, I'm a let the market tell you what's happening. And the market, we just had a war, like a big war, like something that we haven't had. I, I, when was the last time we had something in Europe like that? 30 years, 40 years, and we have 10% inflation and gold is down, you know, it's 18, uh, it's down 3%, 4% on the year. I, I'm, I'm right. I'm right. I, there's the proof. Like, you know, what, what, what else has to happen to me? I mean, I'll tell you this, I guess gold goes up if there's a nuclear war, but then we don't care, you know? So let, let the, like, so <laughs> exactly. as many, as many gold bugs could sit here and talk to me and say, oh my gosh, but you don't understand it's going to do so well. well. Well, it just didn't dude. in the worst, in the worst inflation and the worst global conflagration we've had. I mean, arguably as bad as Vietnam in some ways, because it's affecting Western Europe, it did nothing. You know, so I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't need, I just think it's probably, and I think it's probably a perma short because when the market comes back, more people go to crypto, you know, are you going to make a lot on the short? No, but you know, I, uh, but I, I think there's a risk. There's a risk at some point that you just, you break that psychology and it goes down 30, 40% because if there's any, I, I, I guarantee you, we go to anyone a year ago and tell them exactly what's going to happen. And they, even a person that wasn't a fan of gold would have been, yeah, gold's probably up 10, 15%. Even though I think secularly gold, I would have been, if you would have told me, I, I'm a secular gold bear, everything that happened, I'd be like, yeah, gold's probably going to be up five to 20%. And it's down five. I mean, it's over. It's absolute, over. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I know you're a big, you're a big fan of uh, big tech and, uh, you know, just recently Amazon uh, went out and bought one medical. Um, 
and trying to make another push into the healthcare. They've tried it several times over the last 15 years or so with uh, different types of purchases. Um, do you do you view this as a, as a big move? Do you think they, they have, this is going to upend the $4 trillion healthcare industry we have in the country? I think country? eventually. Yeah. You know, my mom actually worked in healthcare. Um, she was one of the, uh, the, the developers of the, uh, the, you know, the, the public healthcare systems moved to an HMO style, uh, back in the early 1980s. And my mom was, uh, did that and worked in HMOs for 30 years. I mean, it's just an incredibly inefficient system. I mean, the same way that book selling was inefficient, the same way that, you know, any of these systems were inefficient. And I think eventually they get through. I think the other thing to remember with Amazon is they don't have a lot of places they can go. They, they, they got too much market share. So, you know, they, they can't do more in cloud. They can't do more in commerce. So they're also looking at big opportunities to be disaggregated. But I, when they bought one medical, I, I, I pointed out that I think there's going to be incredible efficiency that'll be un, unleashed on the economy. Um, you know, even just think about like things like GoodRx. And I, I'm not saying whether GoodRx is a, is a good or bad stock or, or any of that, but you know, how we get our prescriptions post COVID versus pre COVID, you know, there was just, there was just dumb stuff. I mean, look, I'll, I'll, I'll give another example. I could have said to you four years ago, it makes a lot more sense to do a bunch of zoom calls and not have a whole bunch of people come to an office and waste all that time. And you would have been like, yeah, but it'll never happen. Well, now it's happening. You know, it happened because of COVID. And I think COVID actually did that in a lot of areas of medical, but it's just still like you go into a doctor's office and you got to fill out 30 freaking forms. Like, you know, it's just, it's kind of crazy. So I think the answer is absolutely, I think it'll happen. It's just going to be a sticky one. You know, I think it, it could take five, yeah. 10, 15, 20 years, but I think Amazon thinks in those terms, although I, I don't know how old Bezos is. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So before I let you go, I, I, try, I ask all my guests, and you don't have to answer. You can give an idea, whatever. But I always say, if you're going to go on to an, an island for 10 years, it's kind of the island question. What is uh, one stock or one sector? I know you don't like to give away stocks so you have in the newsletter. Maybe one sector that you're fine buying today, 10 years, close your eyes, you'd be good. Well, you know, the challenge I have right now is we've got a portfolio of the half a dozen names that I was talking about that are these names. I'm just looking at my, my portfolios here that are, um, you know, they're going to go down, they could go down 50, but a bunch of them are going to go up 500 to a thousand. So most of those yeah. fall into, um, internet metaverse, social commerce. You know, I think there's, um, that those areas, cause they've got, they've gotten hit so much, but they're not going away. You know, and uh, and like I said, I make the comparison that in 2001, you know, this is before Google went public. There weren't a lot of great. I mean, Amazon was there. Yahoo, which actually was a great stock for a long time. There weren't a lot of companies that you could sit there and say, these are the real winners in the Internet, you know, or, 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 or really put together that group because most of the winners of the Internet actually came five to 10 years later. Today, you look at companies like Roblox and things like this, and, and you can put together a portfolio of that. So I, I, I would say, you know. Uh, uh, mid one well, with mid cap, you know, five to thirty billion dollar internet companies, a portfolio with the expectation that one or two might go to zero. You know, um, that's yeah. Yep. The other thing I would always do is just bet with John Malone. You know, like I just buy a portfolio of Malone stuff, and you're gonna, you know. So the difference between those two portfolios, though, one is gonna have an IRR of fifty, and one is gonna have an IRR of fourteen. Uh, the one that's 50 is going to be super volatile. The one that's 14, you know, the sharp ratio might be the same uh, net net. Um, for those not familiar, sharp ratio is return divided by volatility. Um, but uh, yeah, those would be my two two picks. So out, out of real quick, John Malone, I want to bring, before you get go, um, Formula One. I don't know if you have any any view on that. FWONA. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a race car guy, but I started watching that documentary and man, oh man, like I love this stock. I love this 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 theme. Um, we, without giving away picks, we'll just say that we've been constructive on it. Okay. Uh, and it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, we actually like sports franchises across the board. You know, I think that, you know, we have not even begun getting into monetization of gamification models and such. Yeah. So, you know, there's a number of publicly traded sports p franchises, MSGS, uh, which owns the Rangers and Knicks. Uh, I'm a Rangers fan, not a Knicks fan. Um, you know, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Batrick, uh, the B Liberty uh, Media Braves, yep. uh, Fwonk, um, you know, there's a couple others uh, uh, that we love. And th those are also, those are evergreen names. Like, I just think you buy those and you throw them in a box and you're just, you're going to come back 10 years later. And like, actually, if I had someone come to me and say, what's something I can buy 
that I just can sleep at night and I'm going to make a, a healthy, I'll call it 20% RRR. I throw all those sports names and they're, and they're, they're metaverse plays too, yeah. because I think eventually in the metaverse, I mean, they're, they're NFT plays, they're metaverse plays. And, you know, we've just begun the, the digitization and you go, I mean, the other day for formula one, they redid the, uh, the ESPN contract and it went from five to 15 to 85 to 90. And they said that technically they had Amazon in there for a hundred, you know, like wow. if they wanted to, uh, these are annual numbers. So I think yeah. it's just getting started and it's long cycle stuff. Um, so I love those names and they're, they're, they're awesome, awesome sleep at night kind of names. Oh, it makes me happy because I, I love them too. And I'm a huge sports fan. I don't think we agree on teams, but I'm a huge sports fan. Yeah. The Phillies and, are uh, like a, you know, short kid on the block. They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Enrique, thank you so much for joining us. Hope to get you back soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. Everything from sports to EVs to, you know, the metaverse, the internet, all speaking my language. But thank you so much, and we'll have you back on soon. Appreciate the opportunity. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.